Ultima Underworld 2, Labyrinth of Worlds, is a first-person RPG that puts you once again into the mythic shoes of the Avatar. But is it a fantasy come true, or should it never have crawled out of the dungeon? When the Avatar is sent a letter from Lord British, King of Britannia, inviting them to a feast in their honour, there is much quaffing and gorging done, and that night the celebration ends in a display of strangely quiet fireworks. The following morning, however, a massive gem of magical black rock appears around Castle British, dooming all inside. The doer of this dastardly deed? None other than the Guardian. <laughs> Arch foe of all that is good and virtuous. Once you've gotten over the drama, it's time to create your character. A diverse array of character classes awaits you. Wow, I can be a shepherd? Who wants to be a powerful mage when you can be a shepherd? Your character chosen, you awake in the Avatar's private quarters. The room contains equipment that will be essential in your quest, a map that you'll need to navigate the twisting dungeons, and through an inexplicable secret door, a rune bag that you'll need for your spell casting. And don't you dare miss any of these things just because you're unfamiliar with the game. This is the only place you'll find this vital stuff. As things unfold, you'll be sent into the castle sewers to grapple with monsters, brave strange dangers, and eventually make your way to the bottom. The sewers alone are an impressive dungeon exploring experience, but in this game they're only the start of a much larger adventure. What's more, everything is so open-ended that you can rush through the sewers in a matter of minutes, or choose to explore them for hours on end for hidden treasures. In the deepest depths, you'll come upon the real focus of the game, the Blackrock gem that allows you to travel to other worlds. Wow, look at those polygons, it's mind-blowing! Each new world has some mysterious connection to Britannia and the game manages to weave a mythology around them all. From here on, you'll seek to undo the Guardian's magic by travelling to all kinds of exotic locations, including a land ruled by goblins, a deadly trap-filled tomb, and even odder places. Who's a cute little monster from another dimension? You are! Yes you are! Yes you are! <laughs> Everything the Avatar does is governed by the Eight Virtues, and it is their duty to bring virtue to all eight worlds. So technically, everything the Avatar does is supposed to be virtuous. However, the free-roaming nature of Labyrinth of Worlds allows you to attack any character you want. Honourable! Just valiant, honest, compassionate, sacrificial, spiritual, humble, virtuous, virtuous mode activated. The game gives you massive flexibility, letting you do pretty much anything. Want to throw cheese at guards? You can! Want to get drunk on ale? You can! Want to bash us off to death against a wall? You probably don't want to, but you can anyway! This is all made possible by a unique control scheme, with a right click and flick of the mouse covering most actions. Although the controls are a bit unusual, they fit the game perfectly. Once you've got the hang of it, you'll be walking through doors, sleeping in beds, and stabbing, slashing, and bashing your enemies, just like in real life. The ever-present scroll at the bottom of the screen gives the whole game a dash of text adventure flavour. You see a stone wall. You see the ceiling. You see a strange substance. You see nothing. Oh no! I must have gone blind! If you've chosen a spell-casting hero, you'll need to get to grips with the runic magic system. Using combinations of runes you've collected can create a variety of useful effects like walking on water, levitating, freezing time, or summoning mighty demons. While most spells are detailed in the manual, 
there are also secret ones that you'll have to discover in-game, like the dreaded Armageddon spell, capable of destroying every object in the entire game! Gah, I'm bored. I think I'll destroy everything in the whole world with my magic. Ah, what have I done? As a delightful bonus, the game comes with no less than three handbooks. The Player's Guide, a safe passage through Britannia that's full of esoteric lore, and a reference card, just in case these weren't enough. You're also given a map of Lord British's castle that you can put on your bedroom wall in case you need to locate the throne room in the middle of the night. As an optional extra, you can also buy the hint booklet Gems of Enlightenment, with tips galore, baffling background information, and lots of no colour illustrations. But what really sets this game apart is its atmosphere. The lighting engine effortlessly turns otherwise dull polygons into convincing scenery, and simple touches like the crunching of snow underfoot, or the sound of splashing water, draw you into the game. Ah, I can almost smell the fetid water of the sewers now. The music is evocative too, and changes to suit the action. Ha! Take that, you unvirtuous ghost! Even if it sounds a bit low-tech by today's standards, it's still enjoyable stuff, and you may find yourself singing along. La 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 even a game this great still isn't perfect. Fumbling for keys when you reach a locked door can get annoying. Curses, the door is locked. Hmm, this key is made of a dark metal dotted with tiny flecks of gold. No, it doesn't fit. This one bears an unreadable inscription. Perhaps it will open the door. No! What of this one? Its handle is carved into the form of a raving demonic figure. Fiddlesticks! Ultima Underworld is so open-ended, you can actually kill characters that are vital to your quest. Ha! Now you'll never give me vital information! Despite this open-endedness, multiple conversation options often yield the same result. Avatar, could you go into the sewers and investigate a plague of monsters for me? That'd be great. Truly, I am loath to descend into the sewers. Yes, yes, in you go. Here's the key to the sewers. Greetings, Avatar. Shall we begin this meeting? Not just yet. I have something I must- I don't care, we'll continue the meeting anyway! This game is not for the casual player. You'll have to be paying attention to know what to do next. It's easy to trap an air demon inside your body, my boy. Just dive into some mud that's rich in felanium. Oh, but you have to throw basilisk oil in first. Then just bathe in lava, drink a potion of iron flesh, go to the sigil of binding, and smash this magic bottle. The leveling system, too, features a confusing variety of skills. Knowing which abilities are worthwhile and which are a waste of your precious skill points is a matter of trial and error. You improve your abilities by talking to characters in-game. So even if you know what you want, you still have to find a trainer who can help you. Patterson, canst thou train me to have more charisma? Feridwin, canst thou train me to have less charisma? Charisma is not a very useful skill. Things only really make sense if you give your character a high lore score. What looks like an ordinary axe becomes revealed as an axe of fire doom. An ordinary leather vest? No, it's an extremely useful vest of flame proof. And this may look like an ordinary grey rock, but it's actually a grey rock of ultimate power! Oh no, false alarm. Gamers hardcore enough to take all this in their stride will find Ultima Underworld 2 one of the most rewarding games out there, with excellent music and brilliant storytelling. In the end, the game succeeds because it uses the most powerful technology ever created. The human imagination. If you can take it, Ultima Underworld 2 is one of the finest games of all time.